Okay, right, so today's video is a little short and sweet. I just want to kind of declutter your mind when it comes to Web3 because it feels very head in the clouds sometimes. All of this like decentralization and blockchain and all these big words and concepts. So I think it's best if we just kind of step back for a minute and let's take a look at how we can make some money with some specific business ideas in the Web3 space. So we're going to look at the NFT industry, the creator economy and dApps. And I think by the end of this video, you're really going to walk away with more than a few great ideas. My name is Trent Canelli. I'm a Web3 marketing strategist, and this is the best place for you to learn about Web3, the metaverse, NFTs, and how to market it all. So if that sounds good to you and you're excited, make sure that you like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you're into it. Comment to let me know which of these you think you can start implementing right now. I would love to know which is going to work best for your business, and let's get started. <laughs> All right, so first let's talk about the NFT industry. So NFTs are exploding right now. There are dozens of new art projects going on for sale every single day. And while you might think that those are groups of people with a huge team or at a minimum, one person that's an artist and understands how to compile the whole thing, neither of these two scenarios are true all of the time. The truth is that building an NFT art collection comes down to two things, the art design and the smart contract. Now these are two very different disciplines. Let's start with the art and the art is art, right? Which means that you need to know how to create art pieces that are gonna interest users and get them excited to buy from you. But you're gonna say to me, I'm not an artist. How can I get in on this? Good for you, there are and always will be artists that you can pay to create your collection for you. And it's as simple as going to Fiverr or Upwork and just searching NFT artists and you're gonna find a lot of results. You're gonna find a huge amount of people that are gonna be able to not only draw for you but procedurally generate your collection so that you're gonna get that 10,000 piece collection or whatever size you're looking for. The smart contract on the other hand is effectively programming. You need to be able to specifically code in the attributes that you want, the traits and the utility and what special access looks like, etc. All of that needs to be coded into the smart contract. And just with the art, you can hire people to do this so it makes your life a lot easier. So I would check out again Upwork and Fiverr for the easy solutions here. You're probably gonna find that that's true for most disciplines. Okay, so why am I telling you this on a video about Web3 business ideas? Well, first, you can, of course, hire these people to develop an NFT for you that could be ready as quickly as 30 days from today. But possibly more interesting Interesting is the fact that if you have either of these skills, you can start selling those skills yourself. So you can start selling your art skills, you can start selling your programming skills, etc. Now, there's a lot that goes into a freelance business. I don't want you to think that you can just jump on today and you're going to be having $10,000 in sales tomorrow. That's not how it works. You can start this video to get an idea of kind of how building a freelance business works. But at the end of the day, these platforms are providing an avenue for you to add these services to your portfolio and build clients more quickly than you would be doing it if you weren't using a platform like this. So they really are worth it. Okay, so that kind of wraps up NFT art, but we're not quite done with NFTs just yet because as I've been saying for a long time, NFT art is scratching the service. Art is a proof of concept. There are far more possibilities to NFTs than just the art itself because at the end of the day, NFTs are just data on a blockchain, right? So the ways in which data is gonna be used are pretty widespread. Now it's much safer data than it would otherwise be if you were just putting it on a Facebook server, for instance. But nonetheless, it is data on a blockchain, so it, it's safer, right? So you could get exclusive access to clubs and restaurants or stronger data transfer protocols for real estate or ownership and easy transfer of your own medical information without having to you know, request this doctor to send this or whatever. These are all possible with Web3 using NFT because it provides that central data secure storage facility. Okay, so the next big topic area I wanna to talk about is the creator economy. So to understand how Web3 has changed things in the creator economy, I wanna quickly do a little history lesson. So before the internet, if you wanted to make an impact and you wanted to be kind of public facing, what was the process? You could write a book, you could print some articles for a newspaper, write and perform music, act, give speeches, on and on, all those public facing things, right? And of course, you can still do those things now, but in the vast majority of situations, before social media really took off, the only way to get into almost any of those fields was via some big corporation with a huge distribution network. You needed Sony's deals with radio stations and music sellers, or a publisher to make copies of your book and get them on bookshelves, that sort of stuff. 
And look, those methods still exist. They are important, but they're less necessary today than they were in the past. Because even in the Web2 era with social media, it's made going through these big conglomerates less necessary. Sites like SoundCloud and YouTube are places that people are already going for other things like entertainment and education on other topics. And those places are also serving up your content as a creator, just like that of anybody else. And prior to these social media sites, all you could do was go up to the agency representative of the publisher and say, I would like to publish a book, please. And they would say yes or no. That was it, right? But now you have the ability to directly access that audience. It was basically impossible to do that before. So as a creator in Web2, you can build that brand and you can use that brand to access the target audience that you want in order to start selling them something. So as an example of this behavior, let's look at Casey Neistat. So Casey is a YouTuber with over 12 million subscribers. But if you listen to his interview on How I Built This, which is an amazing podcast, I'll link it down below in the description, you're gonna hear specifically why he started his YouTube journey. Journey. Specifically, he says that he built his brand so that when he was ready to launch his app, Beam, he had a built-in audience of excited people who were ready to download it immediately. And that is exactly what happened. Okay, so after all that history in our back pocket, let's look at what's happening now. All of that access to creators' audiences are just getting deeper and deeper. And with things like Creator Coins, for instance, your customers can directly fund you as the creator. I'm talking about money, right? As to what you're getting when you're paying for a creator with their Creator Coin, that could be anything. There are as many ideas there as there are influencers in the world. Maybe it's as simple as direct access to that creator. You can have a one-on-one -on -one with them once a month. Gary V does that. Or creator coin holders can get more content than people who don't have these tokens in their possession. I talk a lot about creator coins in this video, which I would suggest you check out just to get a better idea there. But any way you look at it, creator coins, Web3, and new decentralized social media sources are creating deeper connections with audiences. It is easier and easier to talk directly to people that you trust, which means that you, as the creator and the person that this audience trusts, will have an easier time building that trust and selling something to that audience that might not have been there for you to sell to even 20 years ago. And then for our final category, I want to talk about about decentralized apps, also known as dApps. So a dApp is simply an app like you might find on your phone or desktop, but with added protection via blockchain technology to keep your data out of the hands of the big players. So whereas a normal app might be hosted via like Amazon Web Services, a dApp is gonna be hosted via blockchain nodes, which you can think of as little bits of data across several different systems. So it prevents those big data sales from happening since the data isn't in a single space in the first place. And with with all of these security and data breach issues that have occurred over the last 10 years, decentralized blockchain data storage has to be the solution because it just makes that so much harder to do. Now as to what to build, kind of anything that you want. There are no real restrictions or limitations just because this is decentralized. And in fact, in some ways it's more freeing. There of course might be ethical concerns with how crazy things can get without these kind of restrictions, but it stands nonetheless as a fact that there is nothing that you can do in a centralized environment that can't be done in a decentralized one as well. So social media, e-commerce, gaming, banking, all of these things are possible via dApps. So again, we return to this question, which I am sure some of you are gonna have, which is, Trent, that sounds great. I would love to do that. I'm not a programmer. Not a problem. There are platforms out there that can do that for you, that can build that D app without you having to have any coding knowledge. So you can just go onto this platform and start to build out what you're looking for, drag and drop profiles, etc. Now, I haven't used any of these D app builders myself, so I can't give you a specific review, but I've heard good things about the Ethereum builder and Tron for D app building. So if you decide that that's a good way to go, great. If you decide that even that's too complicated, which is completely understandable, we're all incredibly busy, that's not a problem either. If you have a concept, go back to Upwork, go back to Fiverr, find someone there that you think is going to be good and have them build it out. So there you go. Like I said, short and sweet, three top business ideas in the Web3 space today. I hope that that was helpful. There's a lot that you can get out of this because even though these are three big categories, there is just so much in each one of them. So let me know if you have any ideas that you want to workshop. You can just shoot me a comment down below or if there's something in Web3 that you really want to learn about, I would love to be able to help you out. Just let me know in the comments. Otherwise, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you're into it, and I will catch you in the next one.